I watch a Christian movie pretty much every week. There are three Christian news aggregators and another four Christian blogs that I check in on every couple of days. I have Google alerts for dozens of prominent evangelicals, and I've purchased multiple Bibles online. Needless to say, all the various bots trying to pigeonhole my personality for the purposes of advertising online are pretty sure that I'm super-duper Christian. And in my line of work, that's actually a good thing. It offers me this weird peek behind the curtain to the online experience of a devout evangelical. Hell, I actually reinforce it as often as I can by regularly clicking through on those religious ads. And let me just say, their ads are fucking weird. Yeah, you know, I'd say the two I get most often are for like these not so charitable charity groups that want me to donate money to their give Bibles to hungry people so they can get right with Jesus quick before they starve to death groups. Like just picture a collage of white savior images in your head and you've pretty much already nailed nine out of 10 of those. And the other major category is any product or service whatsoever, except with Christian in the name, right? Like so-and-so's Christian gutter solutions or such and such Christian accounting service. Kind of like the way Mike Lindell wore a giant cross in his MyPillow ads from the get-go. So those of us paying attention knew he was a terrible asshole way before he started funding anti-abortion movies. Anyway, but my favorite category of the Christian ads and pretty much the whole reason I keep teasing ad sense with my faux religiosity are the ones that provide stuff that nobody but a weird ass Christian would want. Right? Like terrible Christian music services, Bible trivia games, 800 numbers you can call if you fear your virginity is in danger. Okay, so I found a new one this week and it was so fucking dumb that I had to share it with you. Now, I don't want to say the name of the company because A, fucked if I'm advertising for them and B, I didn't remember it. Yeah, great ad, guys. But ultimately, for this whole diatribe to make sense and for me to not have to say company X a bunch of times, I kind of have to. So I looked it up. The name of the company is Vid Angel, And what they do is so you can watch streaming content through their service, but they'll go through and edit out all the swear words. And I'm not I'm not talking about just Carlin seven words. They'll remove the dams and the asses and the H-E double hockey sticks. Hell, you can even go a step further and edit out like insults. Like if, if one cop ribs his partner, they'll cut that out, too. And to be clear, this is not a find a stranger in the Alps overdub kind of thing. These literally just cut out the half second of the movie spent saying motherfucker. The movie just jump cuts whenever something objectionable comes up and it's fully customizable. So you can pick out your like your own unique level of prudery. They have they have separate filters you can check off. So, you know, if, if you think your kids are ready for CD comments like you idiot, you can turn on insults, but not turn on blasphemous phrases like OMG and evolution by natural selection. It even lets you go in and select which individual words you want edited out though obviously they spell them out with asterisks and stuff so you don't have to fully confront the offensive word in order to censor it. Now, your first thought upon hearing this might be, how the fuck is any of that legal? Right? I mean, after all, they're altering other people's intellectual properties and renting you shit they don't own, so they gotta be breaking some kind of law, right? Well, yes and no. VidAngel actually got the shit suit out of them back in 2016, and they were eventually ordered to pay like $62 million to Disney, Lucasfilm, 20th Century Fox, and Warner Brothers. And ultimately, they settled on a much lower number because <laughs> those motherfuckers are never going to have $64 million, and Disney knows that shit. But they did get punished. That being said, they weren't forced to close down. They just had to restructure their business model a bit and wriggle into this huge gap that was intentionally left open for them by former senator, current Christian blowhard, and somehow still alive person, Orrin Hatch. You know, the guy who Mitt Romney replaced to represent Utah in the Senate. He sponsored a law way back in 2005 that specifically carves out exemptions for companies that want to do this kind of shit. It's called the Family Entertainment and Copyright Act because, you know, family and prudish bodlerization or synonyms when you're a Mormon, I guess. And it came up because some Utah-based company got sued for doing this same shit back in 2005. Now, look, if I wanted to do the opposite of this, there is no fucking way I would get away with it. If I started a service called Impure Flicks, you know, that just rented you David A.R. White movies with a bunch of cuss words and gay sex edited in. There's no law that's going to protect me. What's more, there'd be no senator charging to my rescue by bending the goddamn law to account for my weird-ass fetish for copyright infringements. Right? Like, theoretically, everybody plays by the same laws. Now, obviously, that's not true. It's never been true. It's not true in terms of class or race or gender or national origin or any number of other things. But when it comes to Christian privilege, we get a whole different animal. 
they don't even feel the need to pretend towards equality in that instance. And on the occasion that we actually catch them breaking a law that they haven't already been specifically exempted from, a senator comes right into the rescue to tell us that it's only because it didn't occur to him to write in that exemption yet. And that's what makes them so fucking scary. Right. It's the reason they scream persecution at the drop of a hat. They can't even imagine a world where they're expected to follow the law. And for those of us who seek to rein them in, that's a terrifying realization. Even as they're negotiating down their $62 million judgment for copyright violation in an industry that does literally nothing but sell copyrighted stuff, they can put a halo over their logo and not even realize that's ironic. <laughs> 